How many New Year's resolutions lists have you got with habits that you've kind of picked because you've seen people do them and you think that they would suit your lifestyle or that you think that they would improve your life? Well, I've done that many a time. And this is the year that I finally stuck to a couple of habits. And the fifth habit is the one that's changed my life genuinely, completely in just under a year. Now, this video was happily triggered by a TikTok that I saw and it was a wish list for girls who wanted to upgrade their life to that girl lifestyle and the wish list was basically matching sets, luxury fragrances and home accessories, black suits, luxury coffee cups and while those are amazing things to have and certainly make you look upgraded, we're going to talk about the habits that allow you to become that kind of person very easily because habits are simply boiled down to our behaviours and there are plenty of YouTube videos and books you can read on habit changing, why habits are so important to nail and how they really truly shape your entire life but we're not going to talk about that in this video and we're also going to save you the hassle of buying some of those things on the trendy wish list. The first habit is reading more and I know you've heard this a million times and I know it's something that you've probably actually got on your list that you never get around to doing. The benefits of reading even at the small amounts that I've read this year have been insane and I did not even write the goal of okay, I want to read more this year. My goal was to have better conversations with people and have better ways of connecting with people. And I tried to do that by reading because reading is just a form of learning and learning opens you up to a lot more skill sets, a different view of the world. And depending on what you're reading about, it opens you up to new like language and vocabulary as well, which allows you to actually physically, practically have better conversations aside from even the conversation topics that you have to talk about. Research has also shown that learning and reading increases your lifelong happiness. So technically reading over time makes you happier. Another benefit I found this year from making time to read is that it forces you to wind down. It forces you to take that time away from your phone, which could then be the building blocks to other better habits like spending less time on social media and spending less time being like overstimulated by tech, even though I read on my Kindle, but still let's not talk about that. The second habit is being more selfish and protective over your time. And I think this is almost something that people maybe more recently are growing into. Maybe as you find a partner, maybe as you find a hobby that you like that doesn't involve other people, you naturally start to spend more time with yourself or with this hobby or with this other person that you've met but I think there's a difference between choosing to pick yourself in certain situations versus having that time just be replaced by something else over time and the reason why I think you know being selfish and choosing yourself and saying no is a really important habit to upgrade your life is because it gives you so much more ownership over your life and it allows you to live your life according to your terms and not anyone else's and I know that's a really big statement to say off the back of oh just say no and that difference can be boiled down to being proud enough to say no and almost the fear of missing out but turned on its head so maybe the pleasure in missing out pimo <laughs> And setting boundaries with your own time and having stronger and more control over it just allows you to progress with your life. The things that are on your to-do list that keep getting pushed back every week, why do they keep getting pushed back? And it's probably because you don't have the time or you don't have the energy because your energy and time is being spent elsewhere. Are you happy with how that energy is being spent? If you're 100% happy, just ignore this point. If you're not, you know what to do. And the third tip is, goes without saying, you're on my channel, I talk about money. You need to understand money and how it works in this world and not just in a business sense, like how businesses make money and how it works in the world in general. Having an understanding and kind of like a routine with your own money is really important for when you do eventually grow, when you do eventually need to make decisions in life that involve it. You can't always be the person who just relies on someone else to know what they're doing and for someone else to take risks. And a really great example of how important understanding money is, no matter how much money you have, no matter your net worth, is Rob Dreideck's life. I was listening to him on the Skinny Confidential, him and her podcast, and he was talking about how at, at one point he was running businesses that were churning out millions in revenue that had great potential and he just did not understand how businesses valuations could come up and he couldn't even understand how to formulate his own valuation and his own net worth and that was probably at a point where he had been 
quite entrepreneurial for a number of years and he had been making a lot of money but he did not understand how it works and it probably meant that he missed out on certain opportunities or he wasn't able to take full advantage of certain opportunities purely because he didn't understand them and while that's on a really high scale I think it's really important for us individually with our own bank accounts with our own endeavors that we have with money to really understand how it works in the world so that we have more control over it it kind of relates to what my parents have always said about having a driver's license is that even if you don't want to drive it's good to get your license just in case you were ever in an emergency when you needed to drive a car and it's not that you'd ever be in a money emergency but money is all around us and it's needed for almost everything so you may as well just understand the basics of it now the habit involved with doing this to upgrade your life if you know nothing about money make a start on learning about money and increasing your financial literacy and if you do know the ins and outs of money creating a money routine and kind of auditing reflecting and planning out your money on a regular basis this year my money routine has really saved me because it's given me a lot more control over what i'm doing and it's allowed me to really plan out my year and be quite strategic about the money moves that i make now another habit that I've I think it's I think it's changed my life this year is um, moving a bit more and you know it's actually really annoying that I have to list this out in this video because I have always kind of been into fitness I've not really been like a massive gym girl or anything but I've always had an interest in the gym and in the kind of fitness realm in general from quite a young age but I've never really appreciated the importance of daily movement until this year and by importance I mean the long-term effects of daily movement and how it can impact your body and how it can impact pain and stuff as you grow up this is getting really adult right now <laughs> also about how a daily movement habit teaches you a lot more things outside of just movement and exercise itself. I think movement related habits teach you a lot about discipline and resilience which really help in other areas of life and generally having a daily movement habit means that you have to face less issues in other areas of your life as well because you feel more prepared to take them on because your body and your mind are in a good place more often of the time and the daily movement habit that i've been incorporating this year has been a mixture of literally yoga and walks so not even intense i've not taken up any crazy class i've not taken up any crazy walking habit either back when i was young and i was getting into fitness i really thought that fitness took over your life and it was something that you were either into or you weren't but if you're looking to upgrade your life i would 100 percent look into some kind of movement related habit that you can incorporate into your daily lifestyle routine so no matter where you are no matter what you're doing you're able to do it so whether that's walking skipping yoga pilates anything make sure that you just have something every day that gets you up gets you moving and gets you more appreciative of the body that you have and what it can do for you and the fifth habit is the one that's changed my life genuinely completely and i've only been doing it for 11 months so far and when i say doing it i mean it's an active part of my life now it's something that i do internally and by habit and the habit itself is being more self-compassionate. And I know that also sounds like a bunch of boo haki or hoo haki. I can't remember what the word is. But being more self-compassionate for me just meant that I was checking myself and I am checking myself so much more often right now and I do not allow myself to speak badly about myself in my own head. This is just the beginning of a self-care ritual for me and it's bled into so many areas of my life which is why I'm able to say that it's changed my life at this point because understanding your thoughts and understanding how your confidence has been built influences absolutely everything. I stand by that. I stand by the fact that your self-esteem influences everything and your self-esteem grows when you speak to yourself better and it also grows if you speak to yourself better more consistently and the way it's changed my life is that because I speak to myself better I'm able to have more grace with myself when I'm trying to change my habits and my behavior. Having more grace with myself means that I'm able to make more sustainable changes and make habits and behaviors that last. Having habits and behaviors that last has really increased my self-confidence because I've proved to myself that you know what I wanted to do this thing and I've been able to do it and improving that self-confidence also has improved that self-belief where I could write down a goal now and have no doubt about anything that I can achieve it and that's how it's changed my life because I have never looked forward 
to the unknown or the unplanned. I have always kind of semi-dreaded it, made a plan. You know, I love setting goals and I love strategizing and I've always put more energy into that side of it, but I've never really looked forward to what the future can bring me. And now I have that. I have that really deep excitement and appreciation for the fact that the future could bring me anything and I am so excited for it. I could write down the wildest goal tomorrow and completely believe that I could do it. And it's because my self-confidence and belief in myself has really grown this year and it's purely from speaking to myself better. And I spent the first few months of this year literally just correcting myself every time I was rude to myself in my head. If I woke up late and maybe missed the bus, I would berate myself in my head for waking up late, for being so lazy, for being so disorganized, for not caring about other people's time. And now I literally treat myself like a wounded puppy. I would just be like, oh, you were tired this morning. It's completely fine. You're allowed to rest. Oh, you missed the bus? Well, there's about 10 other buses coming after that. So it doesn't really matter, does it? It's completely fine. I'm sweet to myself in the same way that I would be if a friend or family member turned around and started speaking to themselves in a really bad way. You probably wouldn't watch and let it happen. So why would you do it to yourself, right? And and just to conclude, you got to remember that your life isn't going to change all at once. You're not going to do these habits maybe consistently for a couple of months and just wake up one day to a, a completely upgraded version of yourself. It doesn't work like that and nothing really in life worth having does work like that. These habits instead help you get 1% better, which could mean that you're 38 times better at whatever you're trying to get better at by the end of a year. Small actions to compound into big results is a concept that I really, really love. It's a concept talked about by James Clear and by Charles who are both authors on habit building. But the 1% concept is also a concept that allows you to have grace with yourself and be self-compassionate, but still make moves towards improving your life drastically, but in a short amount of time, because really and truly a year of your life is not that much time. So don't wait to get started on these things. Do the things that matter to you. Life is short and unpredictable. So pick the wildest goal that you have in your brain and start making moves towards it. I really want to know if you've got any habits that have changed your life or that you think are going to upgrade your life. Let me know now in the comments and I'll see you in the next